Hey, Megan. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah. We've been speaking mostly just digitally, texting and DMing and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've been busy. Yeah, I've been really busy. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been kind of slow. It, it's it's on and off lately. I mean, March is usually a little slower for I us. I just thought that like the January was a funny month. It is a funny month. Yeah. So, but it's not this year because we had a we had a funny month though in January. It was such a ridiculously warm month. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no burst pipe, no burst anything, problems, all kinds of stuff. So everyone was just like, hey, nope. it's spring. Yep. But then we got a little bit of snow today. We had a few split frost-free hose bibs and stuff like that still, though. Still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was a few times where we had that, but... Well, welcome back to CMPX, this show. Hi. This is my third show. Oh, look, we got an audience. It's great. Yeah, we got an audience. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to introduce yourself, Megan, so everyone knows who we're, uh, who we're speaking with. Yeah, um, my name is Megan, and I work in the plumbing industry, residential. My boss is sitting over there. My apprentice oh, he's over the one there. That you spoke about on my show when you were on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Nice to meet you. Yep. And Ashley, she helps me. And then there's Bruce. <laughs> Might as well do the now introduction. Now you're really nervous. No. 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 no nervous. No. She's a natural. I'm telling you that right now. Well, welcome. And then everybody knows they can find you on IG under water. Yep. And uh, Water Plumber Girl is my IG. And also, uh, I just started a new podcast called Wonder Water Insights. So, yeah. Really and, I, and I will say she's a natural on the mic. I totally will say she's a natural on the mic. Thank you. I wasn't even, I wasn't shocked or impressed. I was like, no, I know that you were going to do a good job. And it actually was a really good, you did a really Thank amazing you. job. Yeah. I, I do critique some of the things that I need to work on, like my ums Ignore and my it. likes. Ignore and, it. Ignore you know, it. But just be yourself. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, for sure. And I know <laughs> off mic, we were just, before we got started, we were just having a, a conversation with some other people that have been doing shows as, as well here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. It's not, no. Especially, like, this is my first time ever doing something. Although it's kind of nice, though. There's only three people looking at us right now. No, I'm, there's I'm okay 30 with people that. here. You have to just like, triple them <laughs> or something. No, there's so many people here. But There's so many people here, t- yeah. Today we're going to have an interesting conversation because it's obviously something that's uh, near and dear to you mm-hmm. and also a, a major issue. And, and I'll just be very frank that I don't know much about it and the more I find out about it Mm -hmm. the more it upsets me that at 2024 in Canada Mm -hmm. in certain parts or even in just regular all over the country Mm -hmm. we have this problem and we're talking about water treatment and water and Mm -hmm. and how our water is not I'm going to just say safe yeah It's actually been contaminated, whether we talk about Mother Nature contamination or we talk Mm -hmm. about direct contamination from industries that are, lack of a better word, leaching into waterways and so now you're getting major problems regarding wells how a lot of people have their own wells and they've been thinking for years the water is perfectly safe but it's not and so this is something that you're taking on head on which i totally respect Mm -hmm. and i want to dive into that conversation because i think it's very important to discuss this because we take it for such grant yes like it's just like we we just turn on the faucet we think that that water is perfectly fine which it's actually the flip side of the script it's perfectly not fine no it's not. And it really just depends on what community you're in. So, I mean, being in the plumbing industry, I realized that there was a lot of lead lines coming in. You know, you have 20,000 lead lines in Hamilton. Uh, that was the huge uh, waking, wake, waking call for me when I realized that there was a lot of these lead lines that were um, not being taken care of or there was no filtration happening unless it was like a recommendation from, you know, either myself or you know uh, or the city the city will recommend a replacement of lead lines but um, it's not being pushed so and it's not only lead in particular there's a lot of wells and stuff like that that um, are facing man-made chemicals and other contaminants that uh, are a rising concern and it wasn't as much of a concern back in the day but with all this industrial processes happening and just the environmental factors on that I think is um, something that we really need to start looking into and if we're not being if we're not testing our water properly then we don't really know how to properly treat that and so uh, I think that is like the first thing we really need to think about in terms of you know how to treat something is really to just understand what is really going on with our water The first question I always ask is, where is our water coming from, right? Yeah. So, like, what 
where is this water? Is, is it from the city? Are you getting it up from the municipal water supply or are you getting it from a well? Are you getting rainwater? You know, what does that source look like? Um, and then from there, uh, you would recommend water treatment and, um, yeah. So I guess I got a few questions just to start off with is what are the direct cause and effects when you discover that you have lead line water sources in homes in certain age homes? Mm -hmm. What is happening to that water when it's constantly traveling through lead line pipes? Yeah, so in cities, they, they do put orthophosphate in the water supply to coat the lining of the lead. But so, so it at least brings it down to a, a lower concentration, uh, lower than five parts per billion, which is good thing. But we really want lead to be zero because we do know that lead is toxic yes. in our body and it accumulates and it's, it's just not good to have in our system. Um, but then there are also communities that struggle with, um, with not applying the same resources. So sometimes cities don't have the funds to put orthophosphate in the water to coat the lining of the lead. So that gives you a, a higher concentration and that's where you're going to see people getting lead poisoning. Okay. Right. So that, that is, um, something to really take into consideration. Uh, when you are um, looking at, you know, filtering something or, you know, just what kind of community are you in? I mean, Megan, I, I'll be honest, like, how much of a priority is this for the government? No, not, not really much of a priority. Not no. enough I mean, people are making us think about this, that no. it's really affecting them. And I guess this is like long term contamination. That's, that's the thing. Like. There are contaminants that just because you're drinking, let's just say you're drinking lead for five parts per billion over a long period of time, we do know that lead over time is just not, not good for the body, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I mean, it really just depends on, um, on how much lead is really in there and, and how long you're drinking that. Here's a question. I'm, I'm curious on, is the testing not happening because the government, when I say they, mm -hmm. don't want to know the answer because they know if that answer is in a negative situation, they'll have to strongly do something about it. That's the thing. Like I, I, the thing is, is that it's not really being pushed that often. It's, it's only until you see someone getting sick with lead poisoning that it's like really... Uh, something that has to be done about it. Um, and unfortunately, you look at clusters of things, right? It's not until someone has... Uh, if you look at the community health book, it's okay. basically a map, okay? And this map kind of shows you uh, what kind of contaminants are um, happening in different types of communities and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, um, sorry, I'm joking here. No, 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 it's fine. But you're, you're looking at different things on what's happening. But yeah. I, I'm kind of like, I want to also point a finger at um, we're letting certain corporations get away with, I guess, acceptable standards yeah. on what they can do yeah. because there's always a residual to a product being developed. Right, right? yeah. And I, and I want to go down that path where you have facilities that are producing products yeah. that there's residual from those products yeah. and you have to expel those products somehow and I guess the first thing is like just dump it into the earth and then the earth will filter it but it doesn't do that it doesn't filter it it actually makes it move and it gets leached yeah. and it gets closer to communities that depend on these waterways yeah. and then you're also not just affecting humans but you're affecting all the natural life as well too Yeah. but it's like I go back to the point of is the government not doing enough because we really don't want to know the answer because yeah. if we do know the answer then there's going to be a lot of people pointing the finger at us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and like I said, with the cluster thing, um, you know, it's not until seven, like say that 70 people at least um, have the same kind of symptoms. It's really, it's really hard for people. People don't really look at the water supply or really know what to test for. So, I mean, it could very well be a lot of these sicknesses that are happening in these clusters. Obviously you're look, you have to look into the environment of what you're in. Right. So, um, Sometimes the water supply is missed because they're not testing for a contaminant that is not expected in the water supply either, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and then at the time, the thing is, is that, like, 
the action of that, how is that going to be fixed? And that is a very complex thing to to really um, to think about and to do because is, is it a complex thing or is it an expensive thing? It's an expensive thing, yeah. But also it could be a complex depending on what contaminant, right? So if you have PFAS, right? Yeah. Um, the fact that, that that's a hot topic right now, you know, uh, filtering that out is is uh, is um, a new thing. It's this is a new chemical that we're just studying. And so who's, who's the primary? source of using that material? DuPont and 3M and uh, those. So yeah, big those corporations. Big corporations, yeah. Okay. But also, not to mention, like, PFOS is banned in Canada, but it's, uh, it's in a lot of consumer products still. Like, it's, it's in uh, Teflon pans. Yep. It's in uh, your cookware, like any kind of cook, yeah, cookware. Um, any nonstick non kind of non items. Stick, yeah. I know a lot of people have been jumping on the air fryer train and I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'll take the next one. That kind of mentality is yes. where I'm getting it. Um, ever since I started speaking with you and you started educating me about water, I look at water completely different now. It's not a, just a matter of me turning on the tap and I yeah. look at it and I'm like, I'm questioning it. Yeah. So it's like I stopped doing that using it as a drinking source now. I don't. And I'm, I'm, I'm actively looking at, okay, what other options are there for us to actually clean it? I'm on a, a system that has copper, so I'm, I'm luckily not doing the lead. Yeah. But, you know, there's still, there's cause and effects there as well because we still got to, you want to go to the source. Yeah. It's like, what's our water being treated with? Yeah. And at what level is that water being treated um, with what chemicals? Because exactly. I get that whole mindset of, you know, you, you increase the temperature of a hot water tank to a certain level because you want to kill bacteria that's already in there, but you're also creating other problems by doing that. So it's the same thing. So if we yeah. keep on pumping our water source, supposedly drinking water source, yeah. with all these types of chemicals, where exactly are these chemicals going? Um, because if we're consuming them, bathing in them, then yeah. obviously we know skin's a sponge. We know the human body works this way. So yeah. it's getting into us. Yeah. And it's, it's long term. We probably won't see it until later on in our years. We're not going to see it next week. Exactly. That's where the problem is. Exactly. And I can't wait till we can get enough scientific data to be like, okay, yeah, this action does need to be really taken uh, into consideration. And um, I mean, it might be quite far ahead of our time, but I think that there is going to be a time where we do have a lot more information, just like we have with lead. But the thing is, we have so much information with lead, but there's still not much being done. So I feel like it's being suppressed. It is. I would think so. I would think it's being suppressed or, you know, just not talked about enough. And that's why I think these social media, that's why, you know, I, I mean, I, I make a lot of plumbing content, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to getting into water treatment for that reason is because, you know, I think that there are a lot of families that are just wanting to know the answers yeah. and some families are getting sick and they don't know why. And I think that if I could, you know, be that, that space for people to be able to actually like, you know, have that, that trust and that transparency, I think that's something that I would love to go for, even though I know I have a, a long way to go in learning. And I know that I'm definitely going to have questions that I have no idea how to answer. But, you know, that's something that I'm really, yeah, willing to tackle. But the answers, the answers honestly are out there. Yeah. And, and as much as I was paying attention to what you were saying last year, I also was shocked to find out about the indigenous water. And just what what's involved there? How there's yeah. nothing going on there. There's no protection going on there. Yeah. How most like places have nothing, no protection whatsoever. They don't have clean, supposedly clean drinking water. Yeah. And you know, it's our version of clean drinking water. And it's such a shame that that's going on in 2024. Exactly. Well, there's just not enough resources in those areas. Like for instance. Uh, my, I, I lived in Newfoundland for seven years, and my, my family currently lives there, and there is no water treatment plant. So, so everyone's on a well water system? Yeah, they're on a well, and the only thing that's, being happen that, that's happening with the treatment is uh, that it's getting injected with the chlorine. So, uh, so, so the town of 7,000 people basically just has uh, chlorinated water, and... Uh, my mom has brown water about once every two weeks or so. Wow. And I always wondered what that brown water was. And um, I tried to figure out where the water is actually coming from. 
I tried to, I tested the water for trihalomethanes because I was concerned about the disinfection byproducts, uh, which happens when you chlorinate water, it reacts with organic matter, and then you make disinfection byproducts. And some of those can be carcinogens. And so um, I did test for it, and it did fall below the uh, guideline, but I would actually like to go back to, uh, to test for more as well. So, I mean, I'm sure that, Maggie, you probably have looked into what is the correct way to do this? Like, what is, it doesn't matter, like, get, let's get rid of the cost factor on, yeah. the, on, the, on the table and that it's not a cool subject to talk about right now. Yeah. And everybody wants to talk about climate change and heat pumps and go ahead and continue <laughs> those stupid conversations. Um, but what if you were to do it right from the beginning and start all over again and we wanted to actually have supposedly clean drinking water yeah. in our homes, what do we need to do? So what I would say is really, uh, first, well, it's interesting because like the states, for instance, let's just say we were in the states, okay? There's a website called the EWG.org, which allows you to see what kind of contaminants are coming in from the municipality. So it'll actually tell you uh, what that treatment, what uh, is recommended for the treatment process, but they'll also tell you what... uh, what is being uh, tested for at the water treatment plant. Is that all over the states? All? That's just in the states, yeah. Okay. But that still doesn't cover the fact that you have a lead line coming in and then that might be, you know. Yeah. So, so it's still a little bit complex there. But I think being able to have a system where, like, similar to that, but Canada doesn't really have one. You have a water quality report that you can, uh, that you can ask for. So... Understanding what is in your water is the best thing to do. Understanding where your water resource is coming from, how to... Uh, to under- That's the thing, though. I feel like it's just so complex for other people to, to understand. Like, I want to learn all of this information so that I... Like, I can't, I can't exactly explain the whole process because it is a huge process of, like, kind of... Like, the way that I want to do it is not... You just you don't just put a filtration system in. You have to actually find find the water quality report, look at the data on that, see if there's anything that the water filtration system can't do or can't filter out. Oh, okay. You know uh, what can it can what can and can, it cannot do, and um, you know and how I would love to collaborate with people in the future on water treatment and just kind of figure out how to do that. And that's why I'm learning these things is because I really want to know the in-depth of, like, how can I actually get clean drinking water for people uh, that are struggling with high concentrations of something, right? But how, how often, Megan, do the municipalities have to test their water? Because I'm assuming that they have to first. Yeah. Uh, to meet certain standards. But yep. second, am I allowed to contact the water supply company in your municipal and then ask them, can I see that test? I want to see that copy of the report. Yeah, you can get a water quality report, but it is a year behind. So, which which I was confused about because I'm like, I want to know the here and now. Yeah. But it's a year behind. And I'm like, okay, well, we can study that data, but like, I want to know now because the w- water changes like the weather. Well, can we ask for a pattern? Can we ask for like the last decade? If you're a year behind, can I see what the last 10 years have been? Yeah, you can. So you can ask that and they will not object. They have to give this because you're a pain, you're a pain taxpayer that's paying into their water that's being delivered to your home. Yep. So I want to know what's in that water, right? Yeah. But it's also like understanding that. That is the complex thing. Like when you look at that report, you're just going to look at it and just if you don't understand the concentrations and the numbers, you're just like... Wow! So you, like, you make friends with your science teacher, and you go back to high school, and you just go, "Do me? Can you just do me a favor?" And that's what I'm trying to do, you know, right now. Is <laughs> I would just, totally do that. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd like to understand. Because you're right; you can't just simply put a filter. Yeah. Because if that filter is not going to take care of what's in there that you assume is, yeah. but you have no idea to begin with. Yeah. What's the point of putting the fi- and spending a lot of money? Yeah. Like people are spending a lot of money on filtration systems yeah. that may not actually be cleaning, so you're not really creating a better situation for yourself. Exactly. But the way I want to tackle it is, is that honestly, it's never a hundred percent guaranteed, no matter where you are, like where you are. But the what we can really do is is just try our our best with the latest technologies and keeping up with the innovation and just really understanding what is in that water. 
right? So, yeah, but that is something that I'm really looking forward to when it comes to, you know, the, the, the future um, and what I want to study. And, you know, and that's, that's, uh, that's definitely, like, I can't wait to, to just learn all about that. Um, but right now I'm just, just getting into it, really. Like, I've been studying it for quite some time, like a couple of years now. Um, but I want to take more courses and classes and I feel like I, I feel like these corporations that rely on these products that have made them so much profit yeah. should be paying a really heavy tax on cleaning up the water sources from whatever range around the facility that's producing their products. You know what I mean? I almost feel like that does a lot better than some stupid carbon tax that's going up in the near future. Yeah. Where I rather have cleaner water instead of a smoke screen on that side, right? And I think that the corporations that are profiting should be paying that tax dramatically. Yes. That would be very nice. That would be nice to get something, something like that, um, so so people can just have a peace of mind at least on, you know, what they're actually drinking, because like, you know, in in Newfoundland right now, I, I, I th- that might be my next episode. Um, I have to ask him, but. He found toxic barrels in the water supply in Deer Lake, Newfoundland, wow. and uh, about 70 barrels. And all of these toxic chemicals were, were not really being tested from the water treatment plant because they didn't have the resources for testing the water itself. Um, they, I looked at the water quality report. I asked them, is this all you test for in a, in a year? And they said... Yeah, like this is it. And none of the chemicals that were found in that barrel were being tested at the water treatment plant. And it's a very small water treatment plant. And I understand, uh, like, you know, they're doing their best, but they're just working with the resources that they have, right? And they don't really have much uh, option for... I don't don't want to paint a gloomier picture, but, I mean, if this is just the the tip of the iceberg that we're finding out about now, I can only imagine what was being done after World War II and getting into the industrial age and all of a sudden all this massive consumerism going on and all these corporations doing things that they shouldn't have been doing and getting away with it because people weren't really conscious of looking. Nowadays, we have so many people looking and they're trying to find it, but... I think that discovering those barrels now is probably just a small percentage of what's really out there that's damaging our water. Exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah. I'm. 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 And I'm. I'm excited to see like what what kind of innovations that people are going to be coming up with, and I'm. I'm really looking forward to trying to collaborate with some of the people, you know, to to really just better. Uh, better these issues. Have you had any conversations with anybody from out west in BC? Because I just, again, I'm doing the assumption thing where I think that people there are a little more um, conscious of the environment and a little more aware of what's going on in their earth, um, that they might be a little more um, not as forgiving, I guess, if anybody's trying to pass anything by them, right? I haven't really looked in specific at BC, um, but I do know that it doesn't matter where you are, you're always facing something. Is there the anybody on this planet, like any country that's actually doing something good with the water, like maintaining it, keeping it clean? Are we talking about like places like Iceland or something? I don't know. Are we well, I think, I think as we see, you know, there are water treatment plants, you know, the city of Hamilton, a water treatment plant, but they're only doing the best that they can with the resources that they have. But I, in terms of like advanced technologies, um, you know, I haven't really looked too much into other countries yet, but I, I really do want to look into uh, seeing, you know, better ways that you can filter something. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a whole journey to go here's, on. Here's the other scary thing is that um, we're just taking their word. We're yeah. not visibly seeing these reports. We're not visibly seeing the testing. And they've also given themselves an error boundary. Yeah. So it's not like we're asking you to make it pristine clean. Yeah. You can have so many parts per million or whatever it is yeah. and, and then still be fine. We can still run it through the system. But nobody's really policing them, Yes. which I think that there should be. So it's like you should be almost triple checking, like yeah. treat it like timber framing. It always takes three or four people to confirm that measurement before you cut it because of the expense associated with that timber. Yeah. So this is really serious and that yeah. water should be tested triply and all of a sudden other third parties should be looking at it, confirming, yep. and so nothing gets by anybody. Exactly. I almost feel like there's probably some sneakiness going on there as well. 
Well, it's just like the the consumer report. Uh, what is it called? The National uh, Consumer Report. I think that's what it's called. Uh, there's there's actually they. I just got off the phone with them not too long ago because I was asking them about the Stanley Cups with lead in it and, and everything. Oh, that whole yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. But I was just I was just curious. I, I asked them. I said, so uh, how do you know that when they okay? So they have like about they have thousands and thousands of products going out. Um, and it's not being properly, uh, like they, they, they just rely on, on the manufacturers to basically make sure that these products are up to regulations, making sure that these, there is no lead, there's no this, that. So they, they basically say, well, this manufacturing, manufacturing plant is, you know, is supposed to, uh, to have that responsibility, but because there's so much going on, they, the uh, consumer report people that actually test for these products for the safety of it, they can't get to around to all all of these these things. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like similar, you know, to the water quality. It's just like, you know, who's who's really triple checking unless something goes wrong where someone gets sick. Like let's just say the cons- you know you have uh, what are those called callbacks on. Um, on toys that have high levels of lead. Yeah. Well, it's because the manufacturing company did not follow through with that regulation, that safety standard. And then it wasn't until someone was like, oh, <laughs> you know, this is this is not good. And so that's kind of the same concept with water quality, really. Uh, you know, it's just these these things uh, get into our water and then people, like, they, you know, they just, it just doesn't get tested as, as well as it should be. <coughs> And then I guess it also becomes like a little bit of a shell game because you get these big corporations that are making a lot of money still continuing to make these products. Um, yeah. And then they kind of bury these small towns yeah. uh, legal wise. And then also, I guess they start questioning, well, we don't know exactly what that person has been um, exposed to. It could have just been the water. It could have been the food. It could have been a bunch of factors. So as long as they create a little bit of a reasonable doubt, then they're all of a sudden they're not so guilty anymore. So then now you don't need to get governments pressing the pedal and going, listen, you need to take care of this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's really unfortunate that we're not taking this as serious as it should be taken. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. So it's, a, it's an interesting topic. Are you That's finding important. more and more people kind of rallying behind you and, and, and curious to find out more information too yeah I mean I feel like I feel like there's there's definitely like I'm, I'm always talking about water quality yeah, which and, is great yeah yeah so I mean I, I do feel like when I do talk about it like I, I definitely uh, I try to get you know just I, I don't push anything upon people like I just I want to just spread awareness and educate and where I can and um, and I think that when I talk about these issues, for sure, people are definitely curious about it. Uh, there's a whole world of water that we really just don't don't know about. You know, there's just just so much that we don't know, and um, and it's uh, I'm really looking forward to tackling the uh, the issues. So, what can, what can homeowners do these days? Can they just put some pressure on the government? Can they just inquire? Can they send letters in? Can they? What can they do if they want to do something, contribute? I mean, I, I guess outside of going to their high school science teacher and actually having the water tested or asking the, the water source uh, supplier from your municipality, uh, I, I want to see the results. I want to see what's in my water and, mm-hmm. and then start start there. Is that a fair place to start? I would say, yeah, getting the water quality report and then, um, and then just kind of going from there. Uh, but you could also, you know, get a water quality specialist to to take a look at the report um and then kind of study it from there but then you know um it's just a matter of hopefully that water quality specialist is uh really looking at those um, concentrations and stuff are you hopeful that we could as a nation at least clean up some of our act yeah i am hopeful I, i would hope that 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 uh that we can solve these complex issues for sure i mean there's been great people that i've been talking to lately um you know the water quality association they've they've come across a lot of these uh contaminants and stuff like that so um I, i'm really looking forward to the networking in the future because you know it's it's uh yeah it needs to be talked about more 
Well, I mean, don't you, as a plumber, you're looking at the industry and you're working and we're bringing this, I'm going to call it contaminated water, yeah. into our homes. And is that water not damaging, you know, expensive plumbing fixtures? Is it not damaging hot water tanks? Is it not contributing to wear and tear that's going to make all of this machinery that we spend a, per, a fair penny on mm -hmm. uh, fail sooner? Yeah, so that really just depends on, again, where your water is coming, like what your water is. So if you are if you have a, a high total dissolved solids in your water supply, that, like if you have magnesium and calcium, that is when your plumbing fixtures are really going to calcify. And um, that, that's when you would want to, to determine whether or not a water softener would be good for you. Because that, that, that's, in that case, uh, water softeners are pretty much just for plumbing systems. So, uh, yeah, we, I mean, I've installed quite a few water softeners. And uh, it definitely does save on your plumbing, that's for sure, on the calcification and stuff like that. So, but the, the city of Hamilton, they're, they're pretty good. Like, they yeah. have, yeah, their total dissolved solids is definitely not not that much to be worried about. So you don't really see that much calcification happening sometimes, but that's more because the system is pretty old and, you know, so. Are you seeing clients in, in, in my, my construction years? I, I had two clients that asked me to install a reverse osmosis tank underneath their kitchen sink, right? Because they were aware of the water and they just want to do something. Are you a fan of that procedure doing that? Is it helping? Reverse osmosis yeah. systems? I personally think that reverse osmosis systems are good systems because they do, like there are a lot of, there's a lot of dispute with a few of like the minerals being sucked out of your body and stuff like that from drinking reverse osmosis. But then other people are saying that it's, that it's not, I would love to get the real answer. I, yeah. I don't exactly know the, the real answer on that, but I do know that reverse osmosis systems are definitely better to be drinking from if you have a lot of contaminants in your water like which one do you want do you want contaminants or do you want water that is you know a lot safer to drink yeah. right so i think that you have to kind of rule out those those uh those um you gotta just issues. decide yeah. lesser of the two i guess yeah, exactly in my mind it's a reverse osmosis makes more sense instead of yeah um, yeah, and it really just depends on, you know, again, what's in your water. Because, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. I would love to see more of the, the plumbing brands that are, like, even here at lo this location or even bigger ones. Because it was funny. It was, it was Kohler that brought the attention to me about the indigenous water and how it's, yeah. it is in the state it is right now, which is such a shame. Um, but I would love to see a lot more of the plumbing manufacturers step up and probably contribute a part of their profits or a part of something, their, their networking and how to do things to actually start rallying behind this. I think it makes sense to do that because yeah. um, it's affecting all of us, right? It is. Yeah. And especially like in the indigenous, they, they struggle a lot with uh, the immediate health risks, right? Yeah. Which is E. coli and cysts and all that kind of bacteria and stuff. So yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the more resources, definitely the better for sure. Um, I, I would think so. Yeah, it'd be really good to have that on board for sure. Well, thanks, Megan. It's always a pleasure to have you on the mic and talk yeah. more stuff. I know it wasn't a happy-go-lucky full of jokes kind of show. No, that but. was it was good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. No, it was very informative, and I really want people to take away. Sorry, you. I want. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was just gonna say. I just wish I had more solutions because you know it's just a matter of really just learning more and um you know i can't give I you think an that's exact the first answer, solution but yeah i think you get more and more people inquiring and just questioning yeah looking for answers you may not like you discover many answers but at least you're poking the bear yeah that's true right and, yeah. and if you get more of you more and more people doing the same thing then obviously it's going to get to a point where people are going to say okay well, we, we got to do something about this now yeah. because they're not going away yeah, exactly. Right? So we should all just rally and support each other and just start questioning what's really in our water. It doesn't matter where you live across Canada or all over the U.S., but what's in our water? We want to know what's in our water. Tell us, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Megan. Yes. Appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thank Enjoy you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. It's been fun here at CMPX, and then I'm back here tomorrow at the Doll Booth. So awesome. I'll, I'll be, be here as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. We're done. Okay.